Okay. Hi everyone. Uh, today I'm gonna show you how to inspect and test a BMS on a shark battery. I won't cover how to remove the actual battery from the case. It's pretty straightforward. You got eight screws, you pull the bottom off and flip the pack over and normally it should just fall out. If you got a quick connect for the charge port, then just unplug it. If you don't, you will have to work with the case next to the battery pack. Just make sure you don't rip one of these tiny wires off of it. If you got any exposed leads like these, tape it off. Uh, mine is that way because it's a reconditioned pack. The, ca the, uh, the case was cracked and there was cell damage. Uh, so I had to completely rebuild it, new harness, uh, new cells. Uh, so yours won't have that much tape. So rest assured it will be easier to work with. This tape is really strong. It's really hard to cut it uh, because like you can't cut these wires. So if you want to remove it, this like it will be hard. Anyways. First step will be to measure the BMS voltage. Make sure you got all the, uh, you can get measurement from all the series on the battery. So this is a 48 volt pack, meaning there's 13 groups of four cells connected together. So you got 13 voltage measurements to take on it. So this BMS, doesn't have any screws here for the top plate, so I can't remove it and just poke the voltage. I would have to flip the BMS. In some cases, you will be able to do it, but not all the vol not all the uh, the BMS will have enough like length of wires to be able to flip it. Mine is really tight, but I can because like it's not connected. You got four screws. You remove the screws. You remove the top plate, and then you can poke. Uh, with your probes behind the BMS header. But the best way to do it is not to measure with the BMS on it, it is actually to remove the BMS from the equation. To do that, you need to unplug this, uh, this uh, connector. Sometimes there will be glue here, not glue, but probably silicone. So you can just take a long nose and remove it. Make sure you don't short anything out. If it's stuck, you might want to lift the corners using a plastic pick or a plastic spudger tool like this one and lift both, both corners and pull on the connector. If it's really tight like this one, the BMS was glued to it, I, I, the header is really stiff. So what I did is I used my spudger and make some space while I pull on it. Don't use a metal tweezer, don't use a screwdriver, only use plastic. Credit card, guitar pick, anything made of plastic, which is like stiff, you can wedge it between the two and work your way around it. This is very cheap plastic, probably a credit card would be as good. So, next thing, it depends on your meter. This is a cheap meter but good probes. So it's easier, it's like really, really easy to measure the voltage. Make sure your tips are really pointy. If they're dull and rounded and maybe full of corrosion, uh, best would be to change them. Get some decent, really pointy uh, tips like this. If you got needles, uh, sometimes you got like adapters you can screw on and you get a needle, you can measure directly from the connector inside here, but it's easier to just flip it. There's a lot more metal here. So I'm gonna change the angle. There you go. So see a black wire, see a red wire. That means it starts at zero. This is the ground. This is the positive. Like I said, it's a 48 volt. So I got 13 cells but I have also one extra wire, which is the B0. So I got 14 wires, 13 cells to measure. Let's try to refocus here. Sorry for the shaky video. So 
the correct way to do it is you start with your negative and then take your positive. Sorry. Auto off. Sorry it's sideways, but that's the only way you can see it. So first cell, B1, I got 3.5253. Two decimals is okay, you don't need three, but get at least two decimals. If you got like four, uh, 3.5, that's not precise enough because that 0 0.05 here is critical. That's the maximum voltage difference you can get between a, group, a good group cell and a bad one. So if your meter doesn't can't go below one digit after, uh, so uh, get yourself another one for like 15 bucks out of Amazon. You can get a decent multimeter that will give you two digits resolution and, and uh, low voltage. You got range also. Mine is auto range. But if you got range, make sure you're in the zero to 20 volt range. That will give you a bit more precision. So let's start again. I had 3.53. Now I move my red probe to the third spot and I move the black one where it was before, I get 3.53, so basically same thing. And again, I move the red one notch over and I measure. And I continue again until I have 13 measurement I write normally I should write them down so I can compare for like if point if b1 was at 3.50 and b13 is at 3.58 that's a big difference so make sure you write them down never like move both at the same time that's the best way to short if your two probes touch like this you will short out two cells, well, a group of cells. So you will either, you will damage probably your probes, but you will also probably break a wire, which is a real pain to change. So make sure you never short out your probes. So if let's say you got a bad voltage reading, you got like a zero between two cells and you got one that measures like eight volts, that, Probably because you got like a, a wire that is shorting out or it's actually just ripped out the bad solder joint, you know, with vibration, uh, it just disconnected. So I'm going to change the camera again. Okay. So now it's time for the visual inspection. Let's say uh, this wire gave me a bad voltage or two wires anything you have to you will have to trace the wires and see where it leads in this case it's this one so i'm gonna flip over the pack so you can see this is my b13 this group here so what i will have to do if it's connected and i don't see any short you know wire it looks good here it's not it's not ex the, the the copper is not exposed. I see a tiny bit of surface corrosion. That's maybe dust or maybe from the solder joint. Looks like it. Nickel strip looks good. This pack is about four years old. Uh, then I move to the other side. I inspect the cells. Nothing out of the ordinary. So what I will have to do is take my probes and measure that group of cells. So as you can see, this is the positives of the B13. This is those three are the negative. These ones are B12, the positive sides. You can tell because you see like there's a hole here and here it's not. It's the bottom of the cell. It's all metal. This one, this, there's like a rim, there's a little gap here. 
So that's the top, so meaning it's the positive. So if you, I would want to measure the B13, uh, I would just measure from anywhere from here. It could be here to here. And I would get that 3.53 I got. And then I would move to here to here to get the B12. And then B11, B10. I'm not going to rip open the case again, but I get. I guess you got the picture. Make sure you don't leave like metal, anything. Move out your pliers and uh, inspect the whole pack. If you need to tape it back, use electrical tape. If you got Captain tape, they're really easy to find on uh, Amazon. It's yellow. It looks like a scotch tape, but it's yellow. It's just better at high temperature. But electrical tape can work, you know. You just make sure you put the uh, green paper. I forgot the name of this. This is not just basic plain paper. It's actually make uh, made for for a battery building. So, if you got like a disconnected uh, wire from a cell group, you can solder it back. There's many tutor tutorials on uh, YouTube. Sorry, I was going to say Amazon, but make sure uh, you watch these because you don't want to heat up the cell too much. It's just like you heat up, you put your wire and you remove. It should take like only a few seconds. If you leave it, your if you leave your solder iron uh, like on the top of the cell for like a minute, that that's way too much heat. So once you get the battery fixed and inspected, then you can plug the connector back in. Uh, depending on the issue, it could be a BMS, but if you're watching this video, it's probably that the BMS is likely fine and you got trouble measuring the header or you got a wrong voltage. So make sure you measure correctly. Don't start, I know, I know some people just like to use the ground and just move. It's easier, yeah, it, 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 you could actually do that. Like touch the ground here and poke. But you would need to calculate because you're let's say they're all at four volts the first one will be four then eight 12 16 and then you will have to do the math to make sure they're equal so it's easier to just like measure each cell so i know this has been long but i hope that helps if you got any questions well you know where to reach me uh thank you